roller coasters, one of the most thrilling rides you can experience. You either love them or you hate them. You know, as I grew up watching cartoons, I would see shows where roller coasters would extend up into space, which we know isn't possible, but it did get me thinking. How close to that could we get? What is the tallest roller coaster we could survive? Now today, the tallest roller coaster in existence is the King of Ka in Six Flags Great Adventure, New Jersey. It reaches 456 feet tall. However, a new roller coaster is going to break the record in 2017 in Orlando, Florida. It's going to reach 570 feet tall. So, since we're always wanting to build bigger, where's the limit? I mean, if we had unlimited money and resources, what's the tallest we could build? Well, what's the fastest speed we could survive? Well, if we take the average dimensions of a roller coaster cart, we get a terminal velocity of around 520 miles per hour. Could we survive that speed? Sure, we've moved people at much higher speeds than that before. In fact, the fastest we've ever moved a person was just shy of 25,000 miles per hour during NASA's Apollo 10 mission. Uh, actually, speed can't necessarily kill you. It's the acceleration that will kill you. Now, you'd probably think we'd be talking a lot about G-forces with this question, when really there's only one issue of G-forces that comes into play, but I'll get to that later. Now, in our roller coaster, we can just assume it's being pulled up by a chain and falling without any assisted push, unlike some roller coasters, down a 90 degree drop. So our only force is coming from gravity. Since gravity pulls you towards the Earth at 9.8 meters per second squared, that much acceleration wouldn't be able to kill you. So does that mean that we can build as tall as we want? Well, if that was the only factor, maybe. But eventually the speeds our coaster would be reaching would be causing your face to be hitting some pretty intense wind speeds. Well, is there a limit to how high of wind speeds we can survive? Well, in 1946, tests were ran at the NASA Langley Research Center to see how human faces would react to wind blasts up to 457 miles per hour. The US Navy wanted to see how high wind speeds affected pilots ejecting from aircrafts. In this experiment, subjects were strapped to a chair that would lift up into a wind tunnel, which are huge tunnels used to test different aircrafts. They found that at Mach 0.44 or 338 miles per hour, the wind was so strong that they couldn't even move their neck muscles against the wind, reaching 75 pounds of force from the wind. At Mach 0.58 or 457 miles per hour, they reached 95 pounds of force. They did even higher wind speeds on test dummies and found that if they went any higher on a human, they would be possibly injured or killed. The documents also state that the 95 pounds of pressure at Mach 0.58 were based on an altitude of approximately 6,350 feet and would diminish to about 35 pounds at 30,000 feet. Meaning that as our coaster moved closer to the ground, the pounds of force caused by the wind would be increasing even higher. So knowing that anything past 338 miles per hour is a danger zone, we can make our coaster around 5,020 feet tall, just under a mile. By the time it finished the drop, it would hit 320 miles per hour after falling for 18.5 seconds. During my research, I emailed a professor from MIT to ask how to go about finding how high a roller coaster would need to fall from to reach a certain speed. Giving him my information I used to find the terminal velocity of an average roller coaster, he replied with this. At 12.2 kilometers, or 40,026 feet, we'd reach our terminal velocity of 520 miles per hour, after falling for 68.6 seconds. Now, going past 1,500 meters and reaching 320 miles per hour, we'd probably be putting some passengers at some safety risk. But if you think that's where I draw the line, well think again. If we add windshields under our coaster, problem solved. Now we can go as fast as we want. Now since we beat the issue of speed, what other limits are there? Well, let's take a look at the Himalayas. Every year, people attempt to climb to the top of Mount Everest, but there's a lot of danger there. Specifically, the limits on our ability to breathe as we go higher in altitude. At higher altitude, the air pressure decreases and the air is less dense. This causes us to take in less oxygen molecules per breath, and eventually the body won't be able to keep up and will suffocate. Now there's three recognized altitude regions. They are high altitude, very high altitude, and extreme altitude. 
Now, the death zone in mountaineering is considered altitudes where the amount of oxygen is insufficient to sustain human life. This is usually pinned at 8,000 meters, or 26,000 feet. However, reaching any of the high altitude regions would be dangerous. Even at 15,000 meters, people have experienced anywhere from mild symptoms of acute mountain sickness to hay for haste. That is, high altitude cerebral edema and high altitude pulmonary edema. They're basically fatal conditions caused by the lack of oxygen to the lung and brains due to high altitudes. So, we could reach 15,000 meters at sea level before some of your riders might be at a safety risk. However, I'm here to push the limits on what's the highest possible roller coaster you can survive. So, technically, we could reach the death zone at 8,000 meters before some of your hardcore riders would suffocate and die. So that's it, 8,000 meters or 26,000 feet. We wouldn't even be able to reach our terminal velocity. But wait, could we even build a roller coaster stable enough to go that tall? Well, yeah, we could build structures taller than Mount Everest when we follow the pyramid pattern. And in fact, since the inside of the roller coaster structure can be mostly air and not solid like Mount Everest, then it could be much taller than the mountain. This would call for an extreme amount of land and a lot of money. However, theoretically, it is completely possible. Now, remember how I said we'd come back to G-forces later? Well, since the only thing we're worried about is the drop of the roller coaster, we would only have to worry about positive Gs. When under high positive Gs, blood is being forced from your head to your feet so you gray out. Once a person is at 5 Gs, he or she is likely to black out because the heart has to pump five times as hard to get the heavier blood to the brain. At 9 Gs, a person would probably die within a minute or less from the lack of blood to the brain. These positive Gs are experienced when the drop comes to an end and curves back to the horizontal orientation. The sharper the curve is, the higher the G-force, because of the short amount of time the coaster has to decelerate. So, all we have to do is adjust the curve at the bottom to allow for enough time to slow down. The complete opposite objective of the euthanasia coaster. A truly dark piece of art. The Euthanasia Coaster is an art concept for a still roller coaster designed to kill its passengers. It reaches 500 meters tall and is designed to take the 24 passenger train to 220 miles per hour, then flattening out and speeding into seven clothoid loops. Each loop has a smaller diameter than the previous one to maintain a lethal 10 G's to the passengers. At the end of the seventh loop, the passengers take a sharp right turn where the ride ends. The 10 Gs from the loops, however, have caused the passengers to suffer from an insufficient supply of oxygen to the brain, leaving them all dead. So while some of us are trying to figure out what's the best roller coaster you can ride without dying, some people are trying to figure out what's the best roller coaster that will kill you.